have made huge advances with medicine, of course, um, and with the advance uh, with the antiretroviral drugs, it's not a death sentence anymore. And with PrEP, it's you know made things even easier. But you know, I, when I was young, I thought I was invincible, and a, and a drug and an alcohol, uh, you know, a lot of alcohol can change one's mind, and you think you can think that you are invincible, and it doesn't matter. But it does matter, and it's really crucial that people um, grow up and treat this disease with the respect it should be treated with. Um, because otherwise, it, we're never gonna beat this. And uh, we're winning the battle. <laughs> we're winning the battle. Um, and you know, we've made great advances in, in, in London. Um, and the rates have gone down quite alarmingly because people are getting tested and people are now on PrEP. Um, but you know, it's, um, the stigma is more, more, imp more important than anything. As I said in my speech, the stigma, contributes to so much that we're battling against. Um, the people who are afraid to still get tested, people who are afraid because they're gay uh, about, you know, it's still the gay disease. And we find that a lot more, of course, in sub-Saharan Africa and in, in, in uh, Eastern Europe. I want to ask you specifically about those two areas, but first, there's a complacency in the young gay community who are having unprotected sex who know, of course, that it's not a killer anymore, AIDS. No. And, and they're saying things to, like, uh, old queens talking about lost boyfriends. We don't need to hear about that anymore. That's gone. Right. Well, that's disrespectful for the people that died for the, uh, you know, those people. We're we're doing great things because of the people that died in the first place, who had no access to medicine, who didn't have the the luxury of having uh, a life in front of them, who died um, in great pain, and in great um, in shame and who were shunned. And to say that about people like that, it's a bit like the war and the Cenotaph and the Remembrance Day. A lot of people have given their life to people now who have the medicines available. You should be thankful, you should be grateful, and you should not in any way demean those people that never had the access to that sort of stuff. You talked about um, the countries where homosexuals still illegal and Oof. 38 Commonwealth countries and, and yeah. territories. Who is going to do something about that? I don't know who's going to do something about that. I'm, one of the things I want to do when I come off the road after my tour end is maybe to, to help in that way and go and visit these countries. Um, but I think Prince Charles, when he's now been made the head of the Commonwealth, he's a good man and he has great morals. And Prince Harry has great morals and, and wants to change the landscape. Those people have um, greater clout than I do. Um, and I think they have it in their hearts that they want to make those kind of changes. It, you know, things don't happen overnight. You can't change a culture um, and people's way of thinking overnight. But you can certainly step in the water and make, have a good go. And, you know, if you don't step in the water, nothing's ever going to get done. And I think Prince Charles, um, when he is made uh, head of the Commonwealth, will do those kind of things. It's interesting because you were saying, you know, very much talking about Princess Diana, it just takes one inspirational person. Yeah. And so therefore, this is the kind of legacy both for Charles, but particularly for Harry. Yeah, absolutely. Harry has inherited his mother's ability to walk into a room and um, make people feel of any uh, caste or any um, status in life, they make everyone feels equal. And that is an incredible gift. I've, I've been around for 71 years. Diana was probably one of the few people in my life to be able to do that. It's a gift. Harry has inherited that gift. He knows he's got that gift. And that's why he wants to do more with the AIDS community and more with the Commonwealth and the young. You were famously pranked by somebody pretending to be Putin, but then you <laughs> did speak to yeah. President Putin. But of course, you know, Russia has got anti-gay legislation. Chechnya, you find pogroms against oh my God. gay people. If yeah. you could speak to Vladimir Putin right now, what would you say to him? I was just say, what are you afraid of? I mean, they say, oh, it's just, you know, we don't dislike homosexuals, as you know, but homosexuals, um, you know, they influence children, and they don't. It's. I would just sit down and face to face and say, "What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? We're not interested in your children. Homosexuals aren't pedophiles. Um, they're less pedophiles than straight people are. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? You know, some of your greatest composers, dancers, um, um, are homosexuals, um, and." It is something that I'm prepared to do. I would love to sit down and talk to him face to face because only face to face with people do you get any progress. You don't get it on the phone. You don't get it on an email. You definitely don't get it in a letter. So you might as well, you know, one of these days, maybe I get to sit down and talk to him face to face. I'm sure he'd be delighted to speak to you. Well, I'd love to speak to him. Um, you talk about the tech giants 
and you talk about the fact that they have got a public responsibility. But of course, you do know that there's some absolutely horrific homophobic material on social media. It's one of, of the course. spaces where you get the most. I don't know why they allow it. Stuff. I mean, they, I mean, you know, it's supposed to be um, free speech, on, but the things that are on on, on uh, social media are so disgusting that there has to be action taken by the people who own these companies, that uh, run these companies, and say, enough's enough, we're spreading hate. We're spreading hate. And you know, people say, well, what about my freedom of speech? Sod your freedom yeah. of speech. How do you convince them, though? I mean, you talk about you know, yeah. the people that are your well, friends, but them. you've got Facebook, you've got Twitter. Stop using them. Then boycott, they make boycott. Boycott them. What, a global boycott because of their homophobia? Yeah, why not? Then they'll, then they'll sit up. When the money's not coming in, they'll sit up. They can do so much good, but first of all, they have to clean house and, make sh and, and become a much more moral um, and Christian thinking in a way or whatever, a moral thinking compass for what's going on in the world. Um, and at the moment, they're not doing that. Um, in elections are being rigged. People are being... Um, bullied online, they're committing suicide, young people are committing suicide because of what's going on online. These people have a responsibility to step up and say we have to put something, we can't continue, they just can't let it go on and I just don't see, they haven't made any action, they haven't done anything to, uh, to, to, to try and stem the flow of hate on the internet. On that basis of uh, name and shame, uh, it's interesting because you're doing a fare farewell tour, you'll have 300 dates over five continents, two years. Um, you talk about the need to see people face to face. Will you be campaigning on those? Everywhere two? I go, hopefully. I mean, everywhere we go, we try and meet the LGBT community. We try and um, meet the HIV and AIDS community, um, whether we're in Australia, whether we're in South Africa, whether we're in Europe. Um, and I think on this tour, it's very important that we do carry that out. And, you know, we are staying in Europe for two months. We're staying in uh, Australia for two months. We'll be in South Africa for, you know, 10 days. We can get, we can do that. I'm not flying backwards and forwards. I'll be there. But you embody the kind of journey over the last 30 years to be the person that you are. Yeah. You know, UK overcame prejudice and everything else. And I wonder what you think of the next 30 years. Will the next journey be the acceptance of trans people, do you think? Well, I think it's, um, I think it's, it, it's happening now. I mean, it's just happening at an astonishing rate. Five years ago, this, you wouldn't even be asking me this question. Um, and it's just happening at an, inc an incredible rate, not even just amongst the young, but amongst the middle-aged and everything. Um, I know someone who used to be uh, a singer with me. Uh, she trans at 65, and she'd become a man. It's the, happiest, the first time she had testosterone in her body. She said the first time she ever felt normal. Um, it's something that's become a, a, a real hot topic and we have to be in any, as, as in any form of humanity we have to be tolerant and acceptance of these people and acceptance of their feelings finally i just have to ask you one short question what's really funny you're doing your you've got your the, the the two albums which are the covers but then you have president trump appropriating rocket man to poke fun at kim jong-un what did you make of that i don't care i mean it's um i try and stay out of that i mean you know, Rocket Man, well, that's, you know, who cares? <laughs> I don't care.